So that's Greek history. Now, where does Roman history fit into that? Uh, as you see, I have so that's Greek is uh, green, uh, red is Roman. Uh, as you see, I have read uh, this top thing is the main timeline, and then this is an expansion of the end here because I needed more room. So uh, as you see, there's red all the way throughout. Uh, so Rome is founded in uh, 753, but what that means is it's a, in 753, it's a when more or less when the Iliad and the Odyssey were being composed. Uh, Rome is a collection of huts, uh, so uh, uh, completely insignificant to everybody in the world except for the Romans themselves. Okay. So nothing really of import to anybody besides the Romans happens for hundreds of years. Okay, the next important thing though, and really only to the Romans, is in 509 they chuck out the Etruscan kings. Etruria is the region uh, just to the north of Rome, and they were more advanced, more powerful than the, Ro than the Latins to their south, and uh, Rome becomes under their domination, and the, in this period, the kings of Rome were Etruscan. They kick them out in 509. They kick out the Etruscan kings, and Rome becomes a republic, which is to say ruled by a senate. And so then the Roman Republican period lasts from 509 BC, and we're going to use the same date that the uh, uh, Hellenistic period ends with, and that's, say, 31 BC, because the death of Cleopatra uh, signals the end of the Hellenistic period. It also signals the end of the Roman Republic because now her adversary Octavian is in pa is in complete control of the empire, and so he becomes the first Roman emperor. Uh, uh, Cleopatra's opponent Octavian, which we'll talk about in a minute. Okay, so that's the Roman Republic uh, from 509 to 31 BC, so roughly 500 years. Okay, now uh, there's lots of awesome, interesting stuff to talk about here. But uh, in the, for the sake of keeping this to 10 minutes or so, I'm just going to point out that Rome doesn't become powerful, is, is not significant to anybody uh, except the Romans. All she's doing now is fighting with the other central Italian cities, struggling to survive, making alliances, beating people up, making other alliances, beating up more people, making more alliances with other little cities in, in her region. But she becomes much more powerful uh, we can say the rise of Rome, I don't know how to say it, uh, after 300. And a, a nice date is 264, which is the first of the three Punic Wars. So after 264, Rome becomes a very powerful force in the, in the Mediterranean. Okay? So notice, that is not in the Greek period at all. In the Greek period, Rome is fight, struggling with other cities to survive, and she doesn't become a power until, until the middle of the Hellenistic period. Okay, so that's, that's uh, broadly speaking, where the Romans fit into this Greek and Hellenistic timeline, which is to say, toward the end of the timeline, do they become important at, on, any, on any level. Okay? Now, uh, we're going to fast forward. Here, Rome is pretty much taking over the Mediterranean, just killing people, taking them as slaves, killing more people, taking more slaves. Um, and it's uh, um, the last date I'm going to talk about before we get to Caesar is 133, and uh, those are the Gracchi brothers, and I only mention them because they're the head of the popular party, the populares. You can say populists is probably an apt description, which is to say 133 for the next 50 years it's going to be a lot of quarreling between these two factions, the conservatives and the populists. 